Well, wrap it up. We're done. With Sora's addition a few months back as the final Ultimate DLC character, the roster is now complete. Over the last few years, we've had characters added, characters improved, characters slapped on the wrist or stomped into the dirt or completely reworked, and, of course, I've changed too. Which makes now a great time to revisit the best of every move in Smash Ultimate, probably the most requests I've ever gotten for a video topic. That said, I have tried to make this one independent. If you haven't seen the earlier version from a few years back, it's not mandatory, and if you have, I've tried to change enough things up to still be interesting. We're gonna speed through the criteria here, so listen up because this is important. It affects the choices for the list a lot. These moves are being judged in a vacuum, not based on how they synergize with the rest of the character's tools, physics, etc. Last time I did this, I asked you to picture a whole bunch of characters assigned completely random traits and moves, except for their very last move, which they were then allowed to choose for themselves. Whichever one I thought would be chosen most often for a given move slot is what I called the best move of that category, which also means asking questions like, how would this move change if the character had worse air physics? Or would this move still be good if the character's dash attack hit lower? This worked pretty well, but it did create issues with some resource-based mechanics, which I generally just scrapped from the running. This time, though, I'm not doing that. Just assume that the randomized character has some kind of trait which roughly balances the resource consumption of the move with how it performs for the source character. Maybe each pickaxe material is available for the same amount of time as it is in an average Steve match. The details really don't matter. Even with all of this, there are a few things that are still just too incompatible with the concept, so I'm still banning all forms of multi-character mechanics as well as any kind of super form character state. The only other notable thing I'm banning is special cancelable moves because it's just too unclear how they should actually work. Should this cancel into all special moves or just the ones Ryu has? I don't know. If you say it cancels into anything, it's potentially extremely broken, which we are celebrating, but it does so in a way that I don't quite think fits the spirit of the list. Sora's up special a lot of Terry's moves, etc. are banned for similar reasons. Three honorable mentions this time to allow for more coverage, which aren't ordered by the way, and that's about it. The only other thing I'd like to say is that this is a sequel video, which historically don't tend to do very well on YouTube, so I'm gonna be a bit more upfront than usual and ask that if you enjoy this, please consider leaving a like and comment. These are huge factors that YouTube uses to gauge whether this video should be passed around to more people and recommendations. Let's do it! Jabs were standardized pretty heavily in Ultimate, and nowadays rarely do much out of being a quick close quarter scrapping tool, and of the few exceptions, I think Isabelle has stood the test of time the best. This squeaky toy hammer is extremely fast at frame 3 in a 60 frames per second game, has solid range for a jab as well as a sword like disjoint, and most importantly, acts as a phenomenal combo tool. Even at early percents, you can get some great combos going, and then later on, it just straight up confirms into her kill moves, and most characters would have a kill move fast enough to take advantage of this. There's also a notorious technique dubbed the Wabel, where you walk ever so slightly towards your opponent at the ledge, which can rack up a boatload of damage. I initially expected this to be patched out as the developers generally really don't like infinites in Ultimate, but it actually turns out this isn't really an infinite like everyone thought originally. It's hard-coded to be escapable after a measly… 20 hits. First honorable mention of the video goes to Bowser Jr. Killing jabs aren't nearly as rare as they used to be, but this one's speed and power are still absolute top of the line. After this is Steve's mobile, comboing sword swipe that he shares with his forward tilt, neutral air, and a secondary forward air. Even past these early percent combos, it's still a much better combo tool than you may expect, it's just that it's stuck onto Steve's deliberately terrible physics, which, remember, are a property of the character, not the move. Good time to start thinking about that criteria. Also a heads up that these attacks which exist in multiple move slots can compete in in every category, but will only appear in one, so now that you've seen it, don't expect to see it again. And then for final honorable mention, we have Roy. Him and his clone Krom are in a very tight race here, Roy's better close quarters sweet spot versus Krom's uniform blade, but while range is always going to be an important consideration on this list, as you'll notice, even someone with airspeed as great as Krom can struggle to follow up space jabs sometimes. So we're gonna go with the safer option that leads to considerably more reliable combos if that sweet spot does connect. Forward tilts are primarily all about that range, and my god does no character show that off quite like Sephiroth. With a sword that looks like… this, thank you Japan, 
Of course we were inevitably going to get a few moves that showed off its full reach, but what wasn't inevitable was forward tilts makes a very reasonable speed, devastating kill power, particularly on its middle sweet spot that still exceeds most characters entire reach, and ability to hit ledges thanks to being angleable. It's an incredible spacing tool with incredible reward that seems pretty blatantly designed to be spammed. Very little to complain about here. First honorable mention goes to the Belmonts, which previously held the crown for this move and now gained some better frame data over Sephiroth at the cost of reach kill power, and the ability to angle the move. Still a fantastic tool, but overall less versatile as a result of these trade-offs. Other honorable mentions go to Lucas, one of the safest forward tilts in the game while still packing great disjointed range, kill power, and two-framing potential, and Mithra, bringing the rare combo forward tilt with extremely solid speed and range. Up tilts are most commonly anti-airs, and the more functionality you can stack on top of that, the better. Steve's up tilt comes out lightning quick, has the exceptional property of being able to walk with it, has virtually no cooldown, making it easy to spam and also by far one of the safest ground moves on shield, and also basically just doesn't have knockback, meaning even a character with physics as stunted as Steve can easily follow up from it for a very long time. Yes, the resource management is a bit of an issue, but nowhere near enough to discount the incredible versatility and power of this simple axe swipe. Honorable mentions go to Falco's wide-reaching combo starter, albeit combos which are slightly dependent on his great jump height, which is a detriment for this list, Snake's infamously strong and fast upwards kick, and Mithra's snappy, heavily disjointed anti-air which acts as a combo starter until unreasonably high percents. Down tilts are usually really good moves, often being a character's safest grounded poke. A lot of them also act as combo starters and two-frame tools, but rarely do they do so with the kind of speed and range that Mithra brings to the table. Her sword sweep comes out at frame 5 with a ridiculously short total animation time, and much like her up tilt, it barely sends opponents anywhere, allowing for nearly universal confirms out of it. This kind of attack is well-tread ground in the Smash series by now, but Mithra's specialized role as the speedy combo character in a duo allows her to push it farther than it's ever gone before. Now, compared to some similar down tilts, it is slightly less safe, but is still mostly unpunishable at range, and even closer, is pushing the bounds of what's humanly reactable provided you don't blatantly spam it. Speaking of blatantly spamming, first honorable mention goes to Rob's unreasonably fast arm poke, which can also start solid combos, albeit horizontally instead of vertically, and has some of the best frame data of any ground move period, trying to challenge this thing on your shield is nearly impossible. Next up is Roy's, who doesn't get as guaranteed a reward as the others, but is likewise one of the least risky grounded moves in the entire game, making it a brilliant neutral tool. He's once again directly competing against Krom, whose lack of a hilt sweet spot makes him less safe up close, but safer at range. Both moves are about as safe as you could ask for though, and Roy has the option to start tech chases earlier with his sweet spot, and then keep them going at much later percents thanks to his sour spot. And then there's Incineroar, who I previously considered to have the best comboing sword sweep before Mithra unsteeded him, and yes, I did say sword sweep. That leg is intangible during the attack. Dash attacks are one of the more uniformly designed moves among the roster, usually acting as a character's best burst movement option. Palutena's shield bash has reasonable range and kill power behind it, but those aren't its main strengths. Along with traditional dash attack uses, the shield comes with a lot of invincibility and a high hitbox, allowing it to perform the fairly unique role of a potent anti-air, a nasty use case that's only become more relevant over time as safe aerials continue to dominate Ultimate's meta. It catches landings in a way very few other moves can, helped out significantly by a very snappy frame 6 startup. First honorable mention goes to Ganondorf, a brutal shoulder bash with high range, high damage, high kill power, solid cross-up potential on shield, and even combo setups at its sour spot. Then we have two more invincible dash attacks which can't quite hang with Palutena but are still excellent assets to have, Sora and Snake's long range lunges. Snake's is a little bit faster both to start up and wind down, but also comes with a generally unproductive sour spot. Sora, meanwhile, has slightly better range, can hit much more of the roster on the ledge, and is is also a more consistently threatening attack, even if neither of these moves particularly excel at taking stocks. It's their mixture of invincibility, speed, and massive range that gives them the titles for me, traits which all work very well regardless of context. As useful as a quick combo starter like Fox has might be, for example, a slower character likely would struggle to make full use of it. Something like Ike's Sword Blow on the other hand has similarly impressive range and seriously just ridiculous kill power after being patched, but there's a technique in Smash called Instant Dash Attack 
attack which provides a lot of utility, with the caveat that it works much better for faster attacks. I've got a video up on my second channel, Mock Rock Talk, where I discuss a few moves like this that just barely didn't make the cut, as well as all moves that didn't survive in between this list and the original one. So if you're curious about more of my thought process, that's where you'll find it. Forward smashes are mostly all about raw range and power, one of the biggest exceptions being Little Mac. I've thought for years that this was the best forward smash in the game thanks to its strength, super armor, and the ability to choose between three attacks in one with all of its angled variants. And then they decided to buff it! The downward variant is a pretty incredible shield pressure tool and shield breaker now, and combined with all its other great attributes, I don't expect this one to be terribly controversial. First honorable mention goes to Meta Knight, for having one of the few forward smashes that regularly gets used as a neutral tool thanks to its very low end leg. This also makes it extremely safe on shield for this category of move, only allowing your opponent to act 6 frames before you can, a number typically more in line with aerial attacks. Bowser Jr. gets a nod for similar reasons, trading a bit of that safety for a faster, larger, overall more versatile hitbox. And finally Corrin, for a forward smash that's solid in its own right, but downright devastating when you include its chainsaw setup. No rolling out of this thing allowed, and if you're near the ledge or already have a damage shield, you're not wiggling your way out either. Pick a god and pray. Down smashes are mostly about covering both sides during ambiguous situations, and also frequently work for two framing. And Wolf continues to excel in both departments, surviving his nerf early in Ultimate's life quite handily. This move has fantastic disjointed reach thanks to Wolf's honorary swordsman status, including downwards, making it exceptionally good at catching recoveries, especially when combined with its ludicrous power at the tipper sweet spot. First honorable mention goes to Sephiroth's unconventional, enormous ground stab, an attack with a surprising amount of utility between its shield breaking potential, dangerously far offstage reach, and relative safety with proper spacing thanks to the increased power of its tipper shockwave. Next up is Ness and his yo-yo, providing a degree of brainless pressure at the ledge that essentially no other character can even come close to matching. For more traditional use, it's functional at best, but I'd say down smashes in general are one of the less essential move types, so they're a category that doesn't really mind being swapped out for something a bit more specialized. Winding this section down, we have Mr. Game & Watch's Double Hammer Swing, an unusually safe down smash that, while a bit inconsistent with its sour spot, leads to absurdly early kills if its berry sweet spot connects. Up smashes are probably the most widely used category of smash attacks overall. They can be done without first taking time to drop your shield, unlike the other types, and are also often very well specialized as anti-airs, trading off a typically slower startup than up tilts for perks like better range, power, and upper body invincibility. Or in Min Min's case, a reflector? This is technically a canonical reference to the ARMS series she originated from, but it's still a pretty bizarre thing to see. And when you combine that with the fact that this move would already be a contender for the title thanks to being one of the quickest up smashes in the game with an outrageous hitbox, these factors also making it easy to combo into, as well as still having very respectable kill power, it's incredibly utility heavy in a way essentially no other up smashes are. This is after being heavily nerfed, for the record. It used to be faster and kill even earlier. I honestly don't know what the devs were thinking with this one. Oh, by the way, if you're wondering why none of Min Min's actual arm attacks showed up earlier, it's because she'd only get one arm to work with and wouldn't be able to change its form. They're still pretty good moves, but taking away those mix-ups does bring them down quite a bit. Honorable mentions go to Captain Falcon with his shockingly large, powerful, and safe double kick. There's surprisingly low end leg on this thing. Ganondorf's destructive, colossal sword swipe that pressures everything from platform forms to shields, and Mr. Game & Watch's powerful, invincible, and just overall unreasonably safe headbutt. No matter what character you're playing, neutral air is probably one of the most important tools in their arsenal. Earlier on in Ultimate's life, a common sentiment was that you could basically just make the game's tier list based on how good everyone's neutral air was. And while I think both design-wise and player mentality-wise things have shifted away from that somewhat, the reliability, versatility, and safety that most of them bring to the table still can't be overstated. This is still a bit of a leap of faith, but I think newcomer Sora takes the title here. Looking at it from the shallowest level possible, it provides full, disjointed body coverage and does great damage. Going a level deeper, it allows for a degree of versatility and shield pressure mix-ups that aren't really comparable to anything else in the game. And then you realize that the fast fall inversion leads to guaranteed combos at literally any percent. 
And then you look into the Nair loops that Sora players started discovering very quickly after release. Now, in the grand scheme of things, this video isn't being made that long after Sora's launch. These kinds of advanced techniques may completely break the game, or may end up being a bit too specific and finicky. Considering that even its basic traits are excellent though, really only lacking the speed to make it a great option out of shield, and there's so much more beneath the surface, I think this move is legitimately incredible. My original plan was to hedge my bets and give it an honorable mention, you know, maybe say it has potential to be the best someday, but that's the coward's approach. I think Sora has the best neutral air in the game. First honorable mention instead goes to Link, an attack that at first glance might look somewhat unremarkable. There are a lot of these kinds of sidekicks in the game, but a quick look at its stupidly huge hitbox starts cluing you in on why it has its infamous reputation, beating out essentially any other close quarters attack, as well as many projectiles, all while being one of the safest moves in the entire game, providing solid combo potential, and coming with decent kill power. Once again, its only major flaw being an unusually slow startup for this kind of kick. Which means we're bringing in Me Brawler to close that gap, a blistering frame 3 kick that also comes with outrageous combo potential and safety. And then finally, we have Palutena's classic Staff Twirl, a move that did have its knockback and hitboxes nerfed, but is still an all-encompassing, fast disjoint with plenty of combo potential. Forward airs are great spacing tools more often than not, and one of the most consistently versatile is the big, dumb frontal arc. Bowser's is one of the biggest and dumbest of all of them though, riskier on shield than usual, but bringing sheer size and power to the table that are hard to match, which makes it one of the most straightforward yet effective edgeguarding moves in the game. And it even comes equipped with a bit of combo potential to really drive things home. Forward air was one of the harder categories to lock down, but Shulk gets first honorable mention for a similarly dumb arc that trades off some kill power for even more coverage and slightly better safety. He was actually in close contention for the top slot, but Bowser's Claw is strong enough to create a lot more viable kill confirm routes, so I think that just barely ekes it out. Next one goes to Sora, for many of the same reasons as his neutral air, including the all-important universal kill confirm. And then we have Mewtwo, with his extremely fast and surprisingly large Shadow Scratch. One of the safest moves in the entire game that transitions from a great combo tool early on into an incredibly potent kill move later. Shadow Scratch, by the way, not Shadow Claw like everyone calls it. Yeah, I don't really get why they did that either. Another extremely stacked category, back airs are usually allowed to be one of a character's better moves because of the increased positional awareness needed to use them effectively, often serving as powerful kill options. Donkey Kong has been the classic example of a great back air for a long time, and for my money, he's still on top. This move is extremely quick, both in terms of startup and cooldown, has a massive and slightly disjointed hitbox that lasts for a long time, and the lingering sour spot even works as a solid combo starter, all while not sacrificing any of the sweet spot's nasty kill power, something that many of his direct competitors are forced to do. First honorable mention goes to Corrin's Wing Flap, another fantastic kill move with massive range and a special pushback property, which gives it additional use as a recovery aid and makes punishing it near impossible. Next up we have Cloud, a sword blow that's unbelievably safe on shield thanks to its range and minuscule landing leg, which also makes it a strong combo move at lower percents. It's once again able to do this without compromising on kill power later. And finally, Palutena's Shield Bash. It's a solid standard back here with good range, speed, and kill power, but nothing mind-blowing. The shield invincibility comes in one more time to really crank things up. The value of being able to challenge other aerials has only improved with time, and while dash attack makes her good at catching opponent's landings, the shield here makes it unusually hard to catch her landings as well. Up air, the juggler's tool of choice. Similar to forward airs, I think the big dumb upwards arc is the overall most transplantable, high utility type of move that basically no character would feel bad about having, especially because it also works much better as a landing option than most up air styles, which vastly increases their use cases. Chrom's variant comes to the table with incredible frame data and a massive disjoint, working amazingly as a neutral tool, juggling option, combo starter, combo extender, what's not to love? Well, really, that'd just be its kill power. Launchers into up airs, whether that's from down tilt to up air, down air to up air, up throw to up air, are pretty basic combo routes that Chrom will rarely be able to seal a stock with, which is why the first honorable mention goes to Ike. I'd say that in addition to excelling in a lot of the usual roles you'd expect from this style of move, it's also the best combo ender of all of them, as it kills earlier than pretty much anyone else's take on the sword arc including ones that need to line up finicky sweet spots. The one exception is Robin's Levin Sword, which was also in heavy contention. But while its resource mechanic can create an item for you to use, and while its sour spot is 
decent for combos, these still serve to make it less reliable and consistent overall. Ike does sacrifice a bit of speed in comparison, but it's still fast enough to end combos and be unreactable. And on top of that, it's also bigger than any of its competition apart from Pyra's, which is surprisingly tame as a kill move, and Sephiroth's, which does give up too much speed to be a reliable combo ender. I'm still giving the next honorable mention to it though, because this really is the ultimate what's the spacing thing everyone keeps talking about attack. It's outrageously big and difficult to get away from, and its high ending lag is much less risky than you'd think because of how desperately your opponent needs to try and escape it. And lastly, we have Mario, the previous winner of this category. The strengths of this move are obvious, it has truly absurd frame data and leads to some of the corniest combos in Smash, but its potency is at least somewhat tied to Mario's great physics and his particular neutral air, which the sword moves are far less dependent on. Down airs tend to be relatively specialized moves, their most famous roles working as offstage spikes, and Pyra's monstrous sword swipe is one of the game's premier spiking attacks. With a massive hitbox that reaches comically far below the stage, it allows for exceptionally easy two frames while retaining a position of relative safety. Beyond that though, its horizontal range is so over the top that this is an extremely rare example of a down air that regularly gets used as a neutral tool, all the more devastating because so much of that horizontal range is designated as the spiking hitbox. Remember Martin Lucina's down air, which spikes for a single frame directly underneath them. Uh, yeah, we've come a long ways. Basically, the entire front part of this move works as an onstage combo starter or as an offstage instant kill. No microspacing required here. First honorable mention goes to Snake, a frame 3 kick flurry that does 20%. Yes, it's not the most reliable move and you're not always going to get the full amount of damage output, but it's still close to as fast a note of shield option as they come and comes with additional movement utility, giving it great functionality that's unusual for a typically very simple move category. So I actually want to pause and dive a bit more into something here, because while I was editing this video, Esam, a top player and content creator, put out his thoughts on the game's down airs, and he brought up a point that I've heard some Snake players make as well. The big argument is that Snake's down air doesn't actually deserve a top slot, because while he's leaping at you with it, you can actually SDI behind him and escape. Is that something you necessarily see a ton of players doing at the moment? Eh. But I mean, this video is an attempt to predict the future to some degree, so fair enough. Having said that, Snake's air acceleration is some of the absolute worst in Ultimate, meaning that once he's jumped forward with a Dan Air, he's pretty much committed to that jump. He can't really drift back again to follow an opponent trying to wiggle through it. So the question then becomes, if a character with average air physics had Snake's Dan Air, would this SDI thing still be an option for their opponent? I honestly don't know, and unfortunately I don't really have the modding tools or knowledge to test this. If not, then yeah, I'd still give the spot to Snake. If opponents could still escape it though, then I'd probably give it to Steve's Anvil. That move is incredibly versatile. Yeah, whenever I make an opinionated video, it's always tempting for me to like preemptively head off every potential argument I expect to see pop up in the comments. I usually resist those temptations, but I know I'm gonna get this one a lot. Next up is Yoshi's 30 damage Flutter Kick, a tool that's passable in neutral because of how much shield damage it does but really starts excelling when used as a combo ender, along with killing off the top later on. Rounding things off, Ivysaur comes to play with another enormous spike, trading off some of Pyra's coverage for a faster startup and some air stalling ability. Neutral specials, often one of the central moves of a character's design. The competition is incredibly tough here, this category is stacked with moves that push the limits of Smash's power levels, but ultimately, Shulk's Monado Arts are just way too oppressive. They allow any moveset in the game to gain the damage output or kill power of a super heavyweight, the mobility or recovery of the game's speediest ninja, and oh uh, yeah, a complete immunity to combos and death that literally nothing else in Ultimate even comes close to replicating. There are a lot of neutral specials that are phenomenal in some or even many situations, but Monado Arts are easily one of the most malleable, all-purpose tools in the entire game. First honorable mention to Joker's Gun, a ridiculous get out of jail free card in disadvantage state, a risk free edge guarding tool, something that forces your opponent to approach, a movement technique, yeah, this move does a lot. The reason it makes this list is primarily because of how much the downward variant in particular breaks every risk reward rule Smash is supposed to have, but it is a move that's just loaded with excellent use cases even beside that. Next up is Samus's charge shot, and these chargeable projectiles are pretty much all fantastic, but I'm giving it to Samus because it's essentially moveset agnostic, less designed around synergy within her kit, a particular movement speed, etc. than most of her peers. Not to say that none of that exists, but it's less pronounced while still being oppressive. This is a universal combo 
combo starter that any character could take heavy advantage of, and also a universal kill move, absolutely dominant presence in neutral, it's one of the dead simplest but still unbelievably effective projectiles in the game. And last but certainly not least, and certainly not simple either, we have Steve. Now, we can debate the logistics of exactly how resource gathering would translate to other movesets or the crafting table. Pressing B does a lot of weird stuff with Steve, but all I'm interested in is this. The ability to place your own platforms is potentially extremely game-breaking, and I had this as the best neutral special in one draft of the script, but it's just conceptually too difficult to picture how it would interact with every moveset. For a few ideas that just stick to full characters for simplicity's sake, though, picture Mario, except he always has full platform extensions available. Captain Falcon. Or Ganondorf with some sorely needed help in disadvantage state. Or trying to deal with Sonic charging Spin Dash behind a wall. Or Ridley's planking, except now he can touch the ground when he's off stage. Byleth able to set up post right below you with those devastating hitboxes. Frankly, Steve may have the best neutral special, but again, hard to conceptualize compared to how obviously insane Monado arts are, so honorable mention it is. Side specials are mostly projectiles or burst movement tools, and of the latter, Sonic's is easily one of the most obnoxious to try and deal with. It's fast, obviously, it's non-committal, it leads to combos, it controls neutral from across the stage, it does pretty much everything. An important thing to note here is that it is absolutely better on Sonic's kit specifically. His speed helps create the needed space to charge it up, and his Danner also helps with fakeouts. But I don't think these factors are enough to downplay just how much the move does. First honorable mention goes to Snake's Nikita. Probably the best edge guarding tool in the entire game between its great damage and knockback, refined control, and complete lack of risk to Snake for using it. Next mention goes to Steve's minecart. Yeah, the resource mechanic is a thing, but a non-committal burst movement tool is also a thing. And a projectile, which is also a command grab. On the topic of command grabs, Bowser's Flying Slam is frame 6, faster than a lot of actual grabs, does absurd amounts of damage, and kills reliably on any stage, but even more so when platforms are involved. It's probably the best overall platform pressure move in Ultimate between its speed and reward, and that speed also makes it easy to combo into, even on a character not known for strong combo starters. Down specials often share a few common sub-themes, including being counters or item pulls, but I think Zero Suit Samus's more unique flip jump has shown itself to be the best in the game. It's my choice for THE single best move in disadvantage state, being an ultra-fast and mobile attack that grants you invincibility on startup, and while the berry time for hitting an opponent on the ground did get reduced in a patch, that was never the main selling point of the move. Its spike hitbox was never nerfed either, meaning it's still more than capable of setting up some really cheesy early kills. In some cases, even earlier than Wario's Waft, our first honorable mention. This move did get nerfed, it's a bit slower now so not nearly as many things combo into it, but a lot of things still combo into it, and it means that your opponent essentially needs to approach the game as if they're playing with one less stock than you are. Next honorable mention goes to Link's Remote Bomb. It's got all of the usual shenanigans and combo extensions that items enable, helped out significantly by not disappearing as early as most items, but even without any of that, its fundamentals are still ahead of the competition. It's a kill move, an edge guarding tool, a ledge trap a confounding neutral option that can be manipulated in any number of ways. All of that's fantastic, and then, of course, it also provides an entirely new method of recovery. Very rare among down specials, and an incredibly versatile one at that. Final honorable mention goes to Hero's Menu Select, which is definitely one of the moves I was most hesitant to include on the list, because its mana resource and random selection make it way more inconsistent than most of its competitors, and I tend to value consistency quite a bit. When you look at the high points of the move, though, I mean, they're just insane. The snappiest character physics in the history of Smash. Complete turn-your-brain-off immunity to any form of projectile. Almost completely free recoveries. Absurdly broken shield pressure and kill options. A boatload of generally great zoning tools. Even a character as slow as Hero can find plenty of opportunities to fish through the menu. And the highlights are common enough among the duds that this becomes an extremely impactful player in any tournament set. Even more impactful if your opponent doesn't speak English, by the way. 
Up specials are another extremely stacked category, with their most important roles being recovery and out of shield options right behind that, and Mr. Game & Watch's fire excels at both. At frame 3, it's literally as fast an out of shield option as exists in Ultimate. It comes with invincibility, and it works both as a combo starter and ender. It doesn't put you into freefall either, which makes it excellent for recovery purposes, as well as being a relatively low risk option to pull the trigger on if you're on the stage. As I mentioned in an earlier video, it is actually a bit less safe on whiff than everyone is necessarily prepared for yet, but compared to many up specials out of shield, it's still in very good shape there. Honorable mention 1 goes to Sephiroth's Blade Dash, which turns into Octoslash if charged. Blade Dash is an extremely versatile recovery move that's hard to pin down, as well as having some use as a burst movement mix up, and Octoslash is an exceptionally long-reaching recovery that's difficult to challenge and comes with a ton of bonus use thanks to its massive hitbox and high kill power. That applies whether we're talking about using it as a two-frame, an air dodge catch, or one of the game's more reliable kamikaze options. And Sephiroth combo videos have become somewhat notorious for constantly ending in Octoslash kills. Honorable mention 2 goes to Pikachu's Quick Attack, an exceptionally multifaceted way to recover and get out of disadvantage, which also works as a surprise burst movement tool in neutral. And then, to top the video off, we have Byleth's Sword of the Creator. I'd never have expected to give this slot to a tether recovery, which are often very exploitable. And while Byleth isn't completely exempt from that, this moves in insane range does do a lot to compensate, as well as the sheer fear factor of trying to challenge it. The fact that it starts combos at low percents, and does that along with spiking later on, makes it one of the game's better reversal tools and creates a lot of scary situations for their opponent. This can be the obvious case where you're stuck above Byleth, but also applies to, say, trying to ledge trap them, a situation very few characters can actually reverse into a kill setup. This move does come with a few caveats, particularly the fact that Byleth's range grants more combos than some characters characters would get, and that some combos are technically avoidable with proper DI, but there's a big difference between clinical training mode conditions and the reality of a competitive set. Many other setups would still be available to everyone, and regardless, it's still a universal offstage stall tool, a decent out of shield option, and a cheesy, highly effective, and relatively easy edge guard to go for. The fact that the best player in the world uses Byleth inevitably does warp perceptions of the character to some degree, and while I've never particularly liked using results in isolation to back character opinions up, I do think there's a ton of value in observing good players demonstrating a move's use cases. As much as Ultimate has changed since I last tackled this topic, this video was as much to update my own thought process towards the game as anything else, so a move that's changed my thoughts towards it so much feels like an extremely appropriate final entry. Oh, I'm sorry, did I say final entry? Uh-uh. We've got one more category for all moves which don't use a typical input, so I don't want to see another thousand comedians talking about Terry having the best back special again. This category is for literally any move that doesn't neatly slot into one of the earlier ones, whether that's a unique stick input or something that uses a specific input condition. Our winner is Kazuya's Electric Wind God Fist, a move that, much like in Tekken, was explicitly designed to be phenomenally powerful. Electric Wind God Fist is initiated out of an invincible dash, is itself invincible, pushes your opponent into a uniquely generous combo setup, and it may also be the single safest move on shield in the game with its crazy shield pushback. The trade-off is that it's very difficult to input, only having a two-frame window to simultaneously press A and the final stick direction, but it's not that bad. I was able to get it somewhat consistent after only a few minutes of practice, and I'm not a Kazuya player. I find it much easier to think of pressing A on the downwards input rather than the diagonal one. Kazuya veterans will be expected to get this input the vast majority of the time, and will be rewarded with what's not just my choice for the best input move in the game, but one of the best moves in the game, period. Honorable mention 1, yes, it does go to Terry's Crack Shoot. Its great range, speed, and travel arc give it a lot of combo potential even if he couldn't special cancel, something that can't necessarily be said for his other input specials, and it also comes with excellent damage output, uses an anti-air and for platform pressure, and a strong boost to any character's recovery thanks to not putting him in freefall after using it. His super moves Power Geyser and Buster Wolf pack more sheer carnage and are eligible for the list since their mechanic of needing 100% damage on Terry to use is completely self-contained, but I still think Crack Shoot is the more impactful move overall because it doesn't have that restriction. Next honorable mention goes to Mithra's Foresight, a freezing effect born out of multiple well-timed dodge actions that can lead to some corny plays and works really, 
really well against close range projectiles in particular. And for our actual final entry, I'll include Ryu's Hadouken and Shokunetsu, sure, they're the same move, as an extremely strong neutral tool that can be fired fast or slow, useful for zoning, starting combos, as well as general shield pressure. And with that, we are finally done with the vi- Ugh, that's right, you all asked for throws last time. Uh, these are so boring to look at. Okay, um... Down throw goes to Dr. Mario, which is what I think is the most consistent of all the traditional combo throws. Yes, I did test every single one. It can be acted out of quickly and is then the exclusive, keeps Mario under the blue line in training mode at 100% club while still, very importantly, having a sharply vertical launch angle. I'd say its main competitors are Mario and Greninja, which launch opponents considerably lower but also a lot more horizontal, and Kazuya, who's somewhere in between. But I'm betting on away or down and away DI being the thing that kills combo throws more often than the slight bit of extra height the Doc's throw adds. I'd also generally like to have a good, long-lasting, and reliable combo throw rather than one which ramps up later, but is sketchier at early percents, stuff like the berry throws or snake's chokehold. Best up throw goes to Charizard, the strongest raw kill throw that I could find in the category which gets even stronger when we bring platforms into the mix. There are a couple of potentially very strong combo throws as well, but too dependent on moveset and character physics, the combo windows for them don't tend to be that great. Best forward throw goes to Donkey Kong, a huge chunk of of the reason he's even a vaguely viable character, and best back throw goes to Ness, the overall strongest kill throw in the entire game. And with that, we're finally finished. Oh god, crabs. Uh, compared to previous titles where having a tether grab has been a major handicap, in Ultimate they tend to be really good, both because they're faster overall and also because regular grabs for stuff like grabbing out of shield were severely nerfed. I think I'd give the top pick to Pac-Man, which lingers for long enough to catch defensive options like spot dodges, which are usually how you avoid grabs, although Luigi's Plunger is also a close contender for the last spot on the- Zare! Zero Suit Samus, it's got range for days while still being one of the more reliable combo enablers. Uh, I found this chart that says the heavies have the highest average damage per second for pummels, so probably them. Taunt attacks are clearly all supposed to be bad, they're a joke, and even though Luigi's is by far the most famous among them, I'd still give the least bad title to Snake. If you didn't have, you know, snake stuff to do, it might see some very niche use as an edge guarding tool every now and then. Best ledge attack goes to Bowser because it reaches furthest. I'm just gonna say best getup attack goes to Banjo to try and traumatize Gimmer. Oh come on, this isn't even competitive criteria anymore. Best final smash goes to Zelda, its hitbox is just ridiculously big and it instantly kills anyone over 100% damage, stage position being completely irrelevant. Competitive final smash meter was very, very briefly experimented with at the beginning of Ultimate's life and if there was any single character who completely destroyed the idea, it had to be Zelda. Alright, and ending on final smashes, we finally, for real, come to a close for the best of every move and I do mean every move, in Smash Ultimate. There's no punchline. This thing took forever. I'm tired. Go read a book. Thanks for watching everyone, this video took a lot of work and some really tough choices so if you think helping it out on YouTube's algorithm with a like and comment is deserved, much appreciated. There's a discussion on some of the missing moves on my second channel above, the sad story of Kirby below, and patrons, YouTube members, and Twitch subs get perks like early videos and Discord access. Later people!